Greetings, welcome to my Roger Stone rant. I am the Lincoln Lawyer, thanks for watching. So, this is kind of an unplanned video, a bit unprepared, but I felt compelled to say something based on the news. Just wanted to drop my two cents on this situation. I should mention that I am not a litigator, though I do have litigation experience, but this rant is based on publicly available information as I've been following this case from the start and it's just going to pretty much contain my views on it. So let's begin, shall we? Okay, so I had expected my days of uh, show trials and kangaroo courts to be over since uh, my family and I emigrated from the former Soviet Union, one of those shitty little satellite countries, um, about 30 years ago. And, um, you know, unfortunately that has not turned out to be the case. Uh, the way it worked back then, and let me just mention that, uh, you know, Soviet Union has always been and remains to this day extremely corrupt from top to bottom, bottom to top, all aspects of it completely corrupt. So the way it worked is generally if they wanted to remove a person, if they didn't like somebody, if somebody was causing them trouble, problems, you know, speaking out too much, getting too much attention. Uh, the way it worked generally is the media would collude with the state and the media would pretty much destroy this person, this individual. They would just continue to bombard the public with various stories of corruption, etc. They could do this to anybody, it didn't matter who it was, and eventually public clamor would increase and uh, they would demand something be done and that's when the state swooped in. That would. Uh, create either trumped up charges or maybe they were real charges, whatever, because I mean everybody was corrupt so it wasn't that hard to create some charges because uh, everybody was on the take, everybody was being bribed, etc. So and uh, you know that person would be railroaded through the court system, you know, where everybody was against them pretty much, the prosecution, the judge, they really didn't have a chance to, to make a defense, a cogent defense and defend themselves. And uh, then once the sentence was handed down, I mean, the public was, didn't have a problem with it. They were totally okay with it. So, I mean, you know, it was like, who are we to argue with the state? The state is almighty, the state is all-powerful. Whatever the state says, that's, that's how it should be. That's, that's, where, uh, that's where justice lies. The state is just, all right? So, uh, so you know, in this situation, um, I'm, I'm seeing this stone thing, it has been a sham, a mockery, a disgrace, a sham mockery, a travesty of justice from start to finish, absolute political witch hunt, political hit job. I mean, I don't care if you like stone, if you hate stone, if you think he should rot in jail for life, if you think he should be impaled on a spike, it doesn't matter to me. This situation should trouble you, period. All right, if you understand the facts, okay? So this started from day one, the first day, the raid, the, the, the unbelievably insane raid where, you know, the FBI SWAT descended on the guy's house in the middle of the night. The guy with the, no criminal history, no history of violence, no guns. Did they expect him to do, get into a shootout or maybe, maybe to swim for it, to jump in the canal and swim for freedom? Maybe that's why they, they sent scuba divers and boats to apprehend him. And, I mean, conveniently enough, there was that CNN van sitting right there during the whole raid, filming the whole thing. I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, who tipped them off? That's absolutely a travesty, absolutely travesty. And so, in my opinion, that event right there, <clears throat> that public, pu publication of his uh, arrest that tainted the jury pool in New York completely, and the trial should not have been held in New York. In my opinion, I don't know why the attorneys did not make a motion to transfer venue for the trial, but for whatever reason they did not. So that's my first point, uh, that raid tainted the jury pool. Number two is the judge situation. The judge is absolutely a corrupt public official. She should not only be not on the bench, she should be disbarred for the activity that she's uh, carried out uh, while presiding over this trial. Absolutely disgraceful, absolutely corrupt. Basically, you need to understand the federal rules, uh, 28 U.S. Code, uh, Section 455A states very clearly that a judge shall disqualify him or herself 
if the judge's impartiality can reasonably be questioned. So maybe I'm not reasonable, okay, maybe I'm, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm partial, but there's plenty of other reasonable people questioning her impartiality. And uh, basically, I mean, she was appointed by a party that is opposing the party that Stone is affiliated with. He could be considered a political enemy because it, the bias is just implied, it's, it's implicit. Okay, and even if that's not sufficient to recuse herself, she's made public derogatory statements about the defendant in front of her that is completely unacceptable, and uh, she rejected a motion to disqualify her because apparently her statements were not uh, biased sufficiently. They were just a little bit biased. So she said basically a judge can't be expected to be perfectly, that doesn't uh, display her bias or partiality, but Stone has been gagged, his constitutional rights have been violated extremely, his First Amendment right to speak out has been removed, revoked, and uh, basically this is an extreme remedy in cases, uh, and uh, I mean, he could have been banned from speaking out about the case only, but he's been banned from spe speaking out 100% completely, making any public statements. Absolutely unheard of, inexcusable, there's no reason for that. And not only that, but his associates and affiliates and family members have also been gagged. Absolutely unbelievable, just absolute disregard for constitutional rights. And guess what? The violation still carries on to this very day. after. The verdict after the jury verdict he's still gagged from speaking out he is a public figure he makes his living by speaking out by speaking publicly and he has been prevented from earning money to be able to pay for his defense as a result of this gag order throughout the case and that is still continuing to this day and i dare you to find any judge that can say that maintaining a gag order after the verdict is a normal and common practice in courts in the U.S., in any federal court or state court. It's absolutely unheard of, absolutely unreasonable. I mean, this judge is absolutely corrupt. It, it, she's acting in an unbelievably biased manner. So the final thing uh, we should get into is this juror situation. It's just recently come out. This juror apparently lied to get on the jury. And uh, apparently there was some evidence of bias that was known at the time of Wadir, but uh, the judge waived it and allowed her to sit on the jury anyway. Obviously she wanted to get on that jury, and the judge wanted her to get on that jury. All right, they wanted a conviction. This is a political hijab again, because they want to be able to say that an associate of Trump has been convicted for affiliation with the Russians, and the Russians continue interfering. They interfered in the last election, continue interfering in this election. So that's the reason that they need to find him guilty and put him away. Okay, so this juror, as it just came out, has made numerous derogatory comments about the defendant, about the defendant's political affiliation. I mean, that bias is absolutely extreme. That entire, <clears throat> the entire jury verdict is completely tainted. It is worthless, it is meaningless, it is toilet paper, it means nothing. That juror should be disbarred, she's an attorney. She was a foreman. She was put in this foreman because of her experience and understanding of, of the law. She had the authority to sway other jurors, to change their opinions on the case, and it can be assumed that she did do so. So, I mean, in my opinion, this, this verdict has absolutely no meaning at this point, and uh, there should be a new trial. Uh, unfortunately, if he has to go undergo a new trial, I mean, the whole thing has to be repeated all over again. He's got to spend another million bucks on defense. I mean, it's, it's unreal. I mean, I, it's, it's very disturbing what could happen. So, basically, um, I think that's about it. That's all I want to cover in this situation. So I think if it could happen to Stone, it can happen to anybody. And um, I think there should there, there's not enough outrage from from all sides that this has happened to somebody in the U.S. And uh, it has really shaken my view of the criminal justice system. Even though I think it is still more fair than the civil justice system, civil litigation system. So. You know, it, regardless of the amount of money, people still get convicted and sent away. You can look at Cosby, you know, but obviously money can buy justice if you look at Epstein. So there's exceptions. 
but in general I had a lot of faith in the criminal system but unfortunately with this case I mean it's absolutely unacceptable what has happened and um, hopefully there is some kind of intervention some kind of action that occurs from some political quarters that demands justice needs to be done we can't ruin people for political uh, opinions that's not how it's done in the u.s even though it has happened before and it probably will continue to happen uh, i should mention that the prosecution was also tainted i mean they were coordinating with mueller Mueller's investigation, they had uh, extreme bias and prejudice against Stone because of his political views and they try to tie him to the president and the charges, they should never have been brought, absolutely repugnant uh, case, they had a tiny, they had no case whatsoever. I mean, a lot of people lie to Congress, they never get prosecuted, there's a lot of government officials, a long list from all administrations that have lied to Congress. They've never been prosecuted. This guy, he, he did not commit any crimes. He was not aware of any crimes. He was not aware of any hacking attempts. He was not aware of any email dumps as far as WikiLeaks. He only attempted to communicate with WikiLeaks and Assange through an intermediary, so that's basically what he lied about. Then he tried to convince an uh, associate of his not to speak or to testify wrongly. So there was definitely some stupid activity on his part. He definitely acted stupidly, uh, so to speak. But these crimes had uh, zero consequence to anybody. I mean, they had as much consequences as you lying to your to your boyfriend or girlfriend where you were last night, or you know what you had for dinner. That's that's about as much consequence as as his actions have had on anything. They're absolutely meaningless. And this prosecution was completely politically motivated and I believe he's a political prisoner. So that is my opinion on that. I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Let me know if you have any questions. Disagree, agree, subscribe, like, be cool, peace out, stay out of court.